Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. We are now approaching the Magic Kingdom station. If you're planning to disembark here, please remain seated until the monorail has come to a complete stop within the station. The doors will open automatically for you to the left of our forward motion. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. This is ResortLoop.com, the gateway to the magic. Thrilled to be joined again by my lovely wife, Dawn. And we are currently on our Royal Caribbean cruise. We are. We're about halfway through-ish. Mm-hmm. so to speak. And uh, we thought we'd just give you a quick trip report of what, ha- what's what been going on so far, what we think of the trip. So far, I will say, sailing out of Cape Liberty, Bayonne, New Jersey, <laughs> not the, uh, it's not the drive to Port Canaveral that we're used to. No. <laughs> Even Miami. That was a bit of a challenge, but nothing like a, this, what they call that, that New York City, the Metroplex traffic oh, that we goodness. encountered. Right. That was kind of crazy. And it wasn't even rush hour. It wasn't even rush hour. God bless you people that live in New Jersey and New York. (laughs) I suppose they're just used to it. I think so. They probably do much better than us that are not used to that kind of traffic. Right. But good old Lola, our GPS, she got us where we needed to go. She did. I got a little nervous when we were going the way of the Holland Tunnel. Right. Because we're like, we're not supposed to do that. I don't want to go over there. Don't make me go over there. Nope. But, but we, we didn't, we and didn't. no, it just kept saying, follow the signs. Right. And we did. We did. And we got where we needed to go. We did. She said, get, stay left to go left. I was like, all right. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. We made it. Right. It was touch and go. Uh, the port experience, it was okay. I mean, long, long wait to get in. Oh, my, to drop off the bags? Yeah. I suppose that happens when you're trying to board a ship with 6,700 passengers. True. If, if you didn't catch our last show, which... If you do, anyway, if you don't, we're on Oasis of the Seas. We are. We're veering from our typical Disney cruise. Yes. And here we are on the here beautiful Oasis are. of the Seas. And she is a beautiful ship. Uh, she is. She's showing her age, though. I think she was. Yeah, she was just in dry dock. I thought I heard in 2019. Well, I know as I sit here and I look around our room, it's just your standard room. It's nothing. Correct. Standard balcony room. Yes. Um. The chair's got some nicks and knacks and scratches on the back, and mm-hmm. the counter's got some nicks and knacks. And yes, the walls don't look extremely clean. I mean, look over there; it's kind of yeah. But I mean, oh, mattress very hard. By the oh, way, oh yeah, we didn't win our royal up bid. We tried. No, we did not. We did not. So which is probably okay. Yeah, uh, which means we did not spend any extra money. So we just got our guaranteed stateroom. Right. Um, so we are in stateroom 6718, which is on deck six. We are aft. Yes. And up until um, today, it's been fine. Um, we have felt some vibrations today. And I don't think you noticed it as much, but I noticed a very fumy smell this morning coming into port. I think that was probably the ship next to us back in. in. Oh, you're probably right. Because there's two ships in port. Yeah. Docked it's probably right not to, us. Docked right next to us is the Serenade of the Seas. Yes. We're on Coco K today, but we're not going to talk about that We're not today. talking about that, but that's probably what... That's... You are absolutely right. That's I exactly so. what that is. It's so gross. So, yeah. It was not pleasant. No. Okay. Well, anyways. Anyway. Back to the topic. <laughs> so, we were in... Oh, my gosh. Probably, what? Maybe 45 minutes in line oh, to drop pro- off yeah, bags, yeah. at least. I was not a happy person. And you would think at this point, there would be some more organized system for this whole sy- that whole system. I of dropping know. off bags and... Or maybe it, just more people... Maybe just enough people don't do it often enough to know how to do it. I don't know. But if you are sailing out of Bayonne, New Jersey at Cape Liberty, take the left lane. Yes. Don't go right. Oh. Take left we made that mistake because there's only one line for the right but there are two for the left so but for you don't every, know that so you, you don't know that you get up there so go left right anyway correct don't so right. we dropped off our bags and then um when we were there the parking garage was only for handicap parking and so then they lead you around to a lot where we parked our van um, it's a secure lot. There's a pretty high fence around it. Yeah. So yeah. I, think I, I, I felt okay. 
Check-in was relatively easy. Check-in was easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were. Very, so, um, the, the people checking us in were very polite, very nice. Yes, so it was the fine. nice, nice people started right away. Right. So we got in. We got on the ship right away. We didn't have to wait at all. No. Um, we went. Did we go up to Windjammer to get something to eat? Our rooms were ready right away because we got on pretty late. I think we just, oh, no, we ran into our friends right away. That's what happened. Yes, yes. We yes. saw our friends. We ran into them right away. We waited up in the schooner bar, and it was only, oh, gosh, not even five or ten minutes. Not long at all. And they announced that our rooms were ready, and so we dropped off our things, and then we went up to Windjammer and got something to right. eat. So Oasis of the Seas is the first ship in the Oasis class of ships, mm-hmm. and so I think they learned a lot um, after building this ship about crowd control with yes, that many people yes. in the capacity of the ship. So Windjammer is not laid out as well on no. this ship as it is on other ships. So no, it, it is, a, it was like a fiasco there the first time trying to f- get stuff and get yeah, a seat. And yeah. Too many people. It's just, yeah. And, and so we tried it again for lunch one day and no for breakfast the next day. Yes. And there's just not a seat to be had. Anywhere. It was even busier. Yeah, it was awful. So I'm, it's just, unless you go like right when they open, it's just near impossible. So, but we discovered um, the Solarium Bistro. Yes, near the front of the ship. Yes, it's much, much smaller, but we seem to be able to find a seat every time we go. Yes, we have. So, yes. And they have kind of the same things there. It's a smaller selection. Yes, much smaller selection, but what you'd want. Yeah, good food. So it's okay. Yes. So not bad. So we haven't eaten in Windjammer too much. No. So we ate there one night for dinner that we were able to find a seat pretty right. easily. So that's been that's been okay. But on the other Oasis class ships like Allure of the Seas, Symphony of the Seas, Harmony mm-hmm. of the Seas, um, our friends have been on those ships and they say they have the food stations spread out a little bit further and there's more of them. Yes. So it's not quite as congested and right. they have, it's a little bit bigger of a wind jammer on those ships. And I trust their opinion because they are, they're Oh, big, for sure. They cruise big, a lot. Yes. They're big uh, cruise yes. people. Yes. So they do it a lot. So yeah, it's a little bit different. Do we want to talk about like dinner dining? We've only been to the what's our assigned main dining room right once, and we didn't even need to do that. We just thought we should go right. So <laughs> we dinner hadn't. is very very different on Royal Caribbean than it is on um, Disney ships. Disney ships main dining is pretty much it. If you want to do a Palo one night or a Remy one night, that's great. Right. And that's pretty much it. Yep. Otherwise, you stick with main dining and you have your same servers and it's fun and there's like a show and you do your thing and yes. the entertainment is with your servers. That is not the case on Royal Caribbean. We were not on the ship one hour and we were pestered four different times. True. You need to do upgraded dining. You need to do unlimited dining, signature yes. dining. I mean, it was just like, I was like, finally, the fourth guy I snapped at because I am not a good transition person from my normal life to my vacation life. And so I was already stressed from the drive-in um, to New Jersey and the 45 minutes in line to drop off the bags and the parking situation and the whole bit, I was ready to snap at that point in time. And so I'm trying to be polite and I'm like, no, thank you. We, we have our dinner, you know, package covered. We have the three dining package covered. Thank you. Thank you. The fourth time we were approached, cause they'll just come up and approach you about it. It's not like, yes. you know, they're holding a sign that says, you know, about Apparently it. we looked hungry. I don't know. Uh, they come up to you and I'm like, you're the fourth person that's asked. We have it covered. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, get away from me. I'm like, oh. So before we even got on the ship, one of the options to pick is a three night signature dining package. Yes. And you can also do unlimited dining, which is different. And I'm not going to talk about it because I'm not sure how it's different other than you can do it every night but it's available it's available and there's also like you get other perks with it i don't know but anyway we did the three night and if you ask people on royal caribbean what does that involve you'll get a different answer for every different (laughs) person that you talk to because we were told different things and so were our friends we're told different things from what we were told so it's different crazy it is so we did that and i think 
it came out, I think when we purchased it, because, and that's the thing, you'll pay different prices depending on the sailing, depending on the time of year, depending on when you buy it, right. it can be a different price. Was there a special? I mean, there was, we paid, I think it was $112 for you and me each right. when we paid for it. And it was at a discount, but other people said that they've paid 135 for it a person yeah well you know the, it just depends they keep rais raising the prices as it gets closer but then they keep discounting the prices so yeah sometimes they'll say black friday specials is the right. best time to buy it but we didn't even book our cruise until the end of april so right you know but that was, for any holiday they were, they were they send out emails saying you know you get mm -hmm. a father's day there was discounts mother's day there were discounts right so, so. Anyway, we booked ours. I just kept it. It is what it is at this point. Just remember, the earliest you ever buy anything is the cheapest it's probably ever going to be. Probably. So. so we got ours. And that covers the gratuity. So don't feel like once you get to your dinners, because some people make that mistake that they think that that covers the extra food cost or the upgraded food cost. It doesn't. It covers the gratuity because they will bring you a bill at the end that you know, it says, okay, you have your dining, this was your dining package. And it does say gratuity included on there. Mm -hmm. But then there's also an extra line for additional gratuity if you feel All right, if you feel motivated, motivated to do that. The first night or the second night we were um, on board, we ate at Giovanni's table. Yes. Um, it's like an Italian place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the food was wonderful. It was it was I had the filet. And um, the for dessert i had the chocolate hazelnut cake i didn't right. find that very spectacular but my filet was delicious i don't know why i had a filet at an italian place probably because i'm not a big italian food eater yeah. but the filet was delicious yes so what did you have uh well we had a charcuterie board on the table that was really good right i didn't have shared. any of that because i don't no, care I know for that I'm throwing it out there yeah i had the uh garlic prawns or whatever. oh right and I'll, I'll be honest they were a smaller than i thought they were going to be for a upscale restaurant like that they're kind of like just your normal size shrimp and there were five of them mm -hmm. but they were very good i will say they were delightfully mm -hmm. very good better than i would probably make them at home mm -hmm. and i knew there was gonna be other food coming so i'm not gonna quibble about you know my entree was a little bit smaller than i thought it might have been right so it was very good. And then I had a salad, the caprice salad, caprice salad before that. It was very good. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what I had for dessert there. I don't remember either. Hmm. So, but it was really good. And we had bread beforehand. That was really good. Oh yeah. Italian bread. Yeah. That was delicious. Oh my so goodness. That was good. But at that restaurant, we did not tip her anything extra. She was very sweet. But oh my goodness, she was slow. Yeah. I think we, we were there for two hours. We were, we were. And it wasn't like it was a well-paced Two no, hours. it was like we waited and waited and waited and waited and boom, everything kind of came out all at once. Right. So it was not. Yeah, it was. So I know sometimes yeah. like I'm assuming Remy, but Paolo also seemed a little bit slow, but it was kind of like well paced and you right. were well and it didn't feel like two hours. Right. This really felt like two hours. Yeah, it was really long. <laughs> Thankfully, we were in good company with our oh, friends, absolutely. so we had a good time. Maybe that's why she was going kind of slow, so they're having a good. She did ask, did we have a show or anything we had to go to? Right. Maybe that's beforehand, why. And we were like, no. And then the next one we went to, and here's where the confusion came in uh, to play. Uh, you can use what they call credits. And so we were going to eat at Portside Barbecue. Right. And so they say, well, you can use credits, which come out to like $20 a person. And so the, we asked the person at Portside Barbecue, you know, we're going to use our credits for our um, three night dining plan. Right. Oh, no problem. And he's telling our friends, well, you know, it's $20 a person, but we have this special, the chef special, which is, you know, $9.99. And so if you each get that, then you'll still have like an extra credit and this and that. And we're like, oh, okay, well, this, that, whatever. And anything left over, you can use at a different restaurant. We're like, oh, okay, well, we'll kind of <laughs> do that. That's really not how it works with the three night dining plan. No, it didn't really make sense to me at the time, but it figured, didn't he, either. So I'm like, okay, well, he must know what he's talking about. Right. I and thought our well, friends thought he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. And that, well, we'll check with guest services and figure out, like, well, where else can we use these credits? Yeah. Because our, our other dining things we had all taken care of anyway. Our, right. So, and we figured those will just make this our third, knock it out of the way. And right. The but if we can use it, 
like, because between us, we would have had like $12 left over for someplace right. else. So, and there's other like places you could eat like, like, okay, can we use it like at the ice cream place? Or Johnny Rockets. Yeah. Johnny Rockets, some other place. Well, that'd be good. Yeah. Okay. So we'll f- figure out that later. So we ate and I had the Texas beef brisket sandwich, but I didn't eat the sandwich part. I just ate the brisket part. It was melt in your mouth. It was good. Brisket. It was delicious. Yes, it was. So the sides, I had um, mac and cheese for the side and cornbread. The sides were not that good. Somewhere I heard that the mac and cheese was really good there. Mm -mm. So I got one, which I, you know, I normally don't get it when I'm out, but I heard it's fantastic. It was a mild step up from the box macaroni and cheese, you know, craft. It w- yeah, it was not good. It was like, I was like, mm-hmm. huh. I yeah. get the coleslaw. Coleslaw was good for coleslaw, but you know, yeah. how, how good could it be? Yeah. But I mean, it sounded good at the time. So. It was fine. I mean, I get the coleslaw again if I was there. Yeah. I suppose. That's all right. I also had the burnt ends with mine. Yeah. But those were good. Yeah. I feel like your ends burnt. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> not split, but burnt. Yep. All right. Anyway. But the brisket was really good. Yes. So, and cornbread, it was a little dry, but oh, it yeah, was yeah. fine. Like. It was like the muffin top part. That was part was good. Like the top of the muffin. That's always the best part. Yeah, that was best. So it's good. <laughs> so we had that. So then we decided, well, we'll go to guest services, see about this extra $12, whatever. And the poor guy at guest services is like shaking his head going, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not how it works at all. Not at all. No. He said, that's something different. That's like the unlimited dining. They get like $20 a credit, like a day or this or that or whatever. And Our guy told us wrong. Yeah. He goes, no, that you have the three dining plan. He goes, you could do that. He goes, but then you're using one of your credits. And he goes, and that's probably not what you want to do. That's kind of a waste. Right. And he goes, so you can book something different. And he said, you know, what about um, Izumi? the hibachi place. Yes. He goes, however, that one, he goes, it is an upcharge for that. He goes, it's an extra $15 per person yes, on top of our credit, that we on top of, for. you know, the credit that you already paid for. And we're like, well, I won't give it a try. It I'd rather try something new than go back to one of the places we'd already been. Yes. So we did that. And we did that last night. Last night. So that was fantastic. Definitely worth the extra $15 a person. Now we've done that type of dining. The right. Hibachi we've done hibachi before. before. I have never, had them seen them make rice with a bigger pile of garlic as that guy <laughs> laid down on that grill. <laughs> I said, like, this is either going to be fantastic or horrible. And it was fantastic. It was the best fried rice we have ever had <laughs> at a hibachi place. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> and even our friends that were with us were like, this is the best fried rice. I think it was because of the garlic. Absolutely. It was. And all the butter. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of butter. I don't know how much butter he used, but there's a, oh, there there's was... a dairy farm somewhere. It's thankful for them. <laughs> it was it was so good. Yes. It was delicious. I had the filet. What did you have? I had the filet with the tiger shrimp. Oh, right. And those the filets they had brought out were the they biggest. They were the thickest filets ever. Best looking filets I've ever seen used at a hibachi restaurant. Oh, yeah. They were they were prime top yeah, prime were, fillets. They were they some were, kind of uh-huh. quality. Definitely worth the extra. Yes, it they were so good. And the our chef, he was like, "I am your authentic Japanese chef, straight out of the Philippines." <laughs> <laughs> so he was hilarious. Yes, he was like, "We'll see. You, I'll see you tomorrow, Coco K, making sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> making the chicken sandwiches at Coco K. Come see me." So yeah, we didn't get to see him though because he was. Um, that a different snack shack than we went to, but right, that's but, okay. Yeah. But yeah, he was hilarious. He did a great job. He was entertaining yes. and um, probably the, one of the best we'd ever been to, I would say. Absolutely. So, did some of the s- same shtick, but he did it well, a yeah, little Well, yeah, they all kind of have their same. Yeah, but it was, yeah. it was good stuff. Yeah, he did a really, My really goodness. good job. I don't know how many eggs that man used also. He was cracking oh, yeah. eggs left and right everywhere. Yeah, on the floor too. For the Yeah, well, one on the floor. <laughs> so, but yeah, he did a really, really nice job and yeah. He is, we did tip extra there. We did. We, we, we left him a little bit extra, extra something, something. And I will say, I've heard a lot about Izumi on the Royal Caribbean ships. Mm-hmm. The hibachi side, I was shocked that this restaurant only had three hibachi tables, though. Yeah. I, I wonder if maybe on some of the other ships there aren't more. I wondered. I mean, they had like the sushi side, whatever they call the other side. Mm-hmm. There were you know, a few extra ta- more tables. Oh, there's a lot of tables on the sushi side. But only side. three hibachi tables kind of was like, wow. I thought there'd yeah. be like maybe six. Right. Kind of shocking, but I guess that's why you need a reservation. I guess so. But yeah, that was, 
It was a very, very good meal. Yes. So, and then we have one more credit to use and we're using it at Chops um, we'll later to, in the week. Yeah, we'll report on that one later. We will. So, anyways, so let's talk about our cabin. Let's do it. So, we didn't win our Royal Up bid. No. So, when we've cruised Royal Caribbean before, we have booked always a junior suite. And this time, all the suites were sold out. So right, because the junior suites were never a lot more than your regular room for whatever. Not at least this not back in the day when we were doing it. Right back in the day, I think maybe like five hundred more than a regular something balcony. like it for a whole weekend. Which, right, which you know, it's not, not bad. bad. So they didn't have that. So we're in a ocean view balcony. It was a guaranteed room, which means the cruise company picks the room for us. Yes, and we are in stateroom six seven one. Eight, right. Don't send us anything. Is, We're gone by the time you hear this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very gone by this time. We are on deck six, starboard side, pretty aft. Yes. Yes. Wasn't quite sure about this location because no, we like we're forward. usually forward. Yes. However, we're kind of liking the location. We are right above the running track. Yes. And below cabins. It's a very quiet location. It has been very quiet. Um, the people who were supposed to be in the one state room beside us were no shows. So sorry, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know. There were keys in their door, and they never showed. So no. not sure what happened to them. So we don't have anybody beside us. So that's no, been no. quiet. And the two girls that are on the other side of us that we made friends with, yes. they're super sweet. They're super quiet, especially for young girls. Yeah, Ooh, love them. Super quiet. <laughs> um, and so, nothing from below and nothing from above we're here. Yeah, so it's quiet. There's some noticeable differences between this room and a comparable room because we usually, this stateroom I think would be very comparable to the type of room that we would get on a Disney ship. Yes, absolutely. There is no storage in this room no. to speak of. None. Disney has them beat hands down when it comes to storage. Yes. There is just no comparison. And I wouldn't know why. This is not an incredibly old ship to uh, by any stretch of the imagination. No, I just, I think it's a... It's just first, poorly designed. Poorly designed. First model of, you know, first model of anything. Always get the second model if you but can. I, but... The Royal Caribbean has been building ships forever. I know. But so new class. what were they thinking? I don't know. So I'll let you a, talk about the bathroom. Oh, I'll get there. <laughs> so on the room that we have, there's a little half drawer that has a hair dryer and some tissues in it. Completely not usable. Then there's two other deeper drawers. That's great. And then there's the cabinet with the refrigerator in it. That is it on the vanity. Yes. That's it. No more drawers. Then there's a chair and a place to do your hair and makeup. Above the drawers and the refrigerator, there's the television, and then there's some counter space. And then there's a little shelf to put, I put my hair dryer above the TV. That's it. On the other side of the makeup mirror, there are two Teeny tiny, skinny, <laughs> maybe two inch deep cabinets. I don't even know what you would put there other than a can of hairspray. Right. That's, that's how deep yeah. they are. There's nothing going in there deeper than a can of hairspray, suntan lotion. Probably. That yeah. would be the end of it. That yeah. is all the storage you're getting on the outside of the closet. That is it. Nothing else. Then there's a little rack that has like two knobs where you could hang stuff. I hung my purse up there, a little shelf that I don't know what you would put anything in. It's a little closer to the front door or yeah, the door. Yeah, close to the front door. And then a little bin. I, I don't, to hold magazines. I yeah, don't know what you're putting in there. That's where the breakfast menus were, the breakfast, continental yeah. breakfast. Uh, no, there's, there's a bin other than the breakfast oh. menus over there. Oh, there's two. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Then beside the bed, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I, I just can't even go there. The side tables beside the bed, I know they have to be movable because on Royal Caribbean ships, the beds split into twin beds. On Disney ships, they don't split. Right. So the nightstands are bolted to the walls and they have a drawer in them. But on Royal Caribbean, they split into twin beds, which are nice if, if the if you guests it. want that. 
We don't. We have it as one bed, obviously. But still, you could do better. The little nightstands move. There are two shelves. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, or three shelves, if you want to count the very bottom. No, oh, I suppose. Three little shelves. No drawers, nothing. Like you couldn't put like your reading glasses or medicine or anything like that in those little shelves. What? Uh-uh. I don't, because it would fall off. I don't know. Right. It's, I mean, you could get a little tiny side table that had a little drawer in it that would still be movable. I don't understand that at all. I don't know. And don't get me started on the power outlets in this room. What power outlets are you speaking? There are three. <laughs> right next to each other. Right next to each other on the vanity. That's it. That is it. There's no UBS outlets. USB, yeah. USB sorry. USB outlets by the night table from light tables you want to call them that yeah none you have three outlets that's it then you have a closet it has one two three four five six six shelves that are little cubbies to put clothes and then you have the rest of the closet to hang things and then there's a higher up shelf where you used to they used to put their uh Life life jackets which they keep the life jackets all at the muster stations now. Right. Uh, so you could put some clothes up there and then you could put your shoes at the bottom. I, I don't even, I, I have no words for the <laughs> lack of storage. Now, do you want the kicker for the whole thing that I just told you for lack of storage? The room that Tim and I are in sleeps five. I know. Five. Yeah. We have a sofa bed that folds out, that when it folds out, it would touch the vanity. That sleeps two more. And then we have a Pullman bed that comes down out of the yes, ceiling. That's not a kid size bed. That's an adult it's size. It's an adult size bed. bed yeah. Down. You could put five adults in this room. I, you would have to keep everything in a suitcase underneath the bed and pull your stuff out every day to get into yeah. it. You had five people in here? They have five, five people five in people here. stuff? I, I just couldn't even imagine. I couldn't imagine having my two young children in this room with me. That would just drive me nuts. And then the bathroom. We've always cruised either Disney or Royal Caribbean in a junior suite, which means we've always had a bathtub and a shower combo. Right. This is the first time we've not had that. And so the bathroom is tiny. And we don't, Disney always has the split bath, which is always really nice. So it seems bigger. So this is a small bathroom and I hate it. And because the shower is even smaller. Oh my gosh. The shower is like an enclosed little capsule. Yes. And I have some claustrophobia issues. And so I got in there and I'm like, I, I can't even do this. Like when the doors are shut, it's like rounded when the doors are shut. Yes. I'm like, I, I just can't. So it's like lost in space. It is. So I had the one door shut and the one door open a little bit. So that made it a little bit better. So I didn't want the water to go all over the bathroom. Right. So, but even then it's not ideal. So you can tell a man designed this shower <laughs> with one suggestion from a woman. And that suggestion was put a bar down there. So you can prop your leg up on it to shave your legs. That was the woman's input. There you go. However, you have to, if you want to keep the shaving cream or soap or gel or whatever you're putting on your leg to shave your legs, you have to turn the water off. Otherwise, it's just running off before you can even start to shave your legs. So I have to turn the water off to shave my legs and then turn it back on. And there's no place the shelving in there to put your toiletries on and to put your razor on is like little bars so my razor keeps falling through there and i keep yelling about that that you get to hear every it's just ridiculous yeah there's yeah and disney at least (laughs) gives you a body wash a shampoo and a conditioner oh yes royal caribbean it's a three in one three in one a three in one your body wash your shampoo and your conditioner is all the same thing in the be, same dispenser. It might also be toothpaste. We're not sure. <laughs> no. The little print's pretty small, but I see that stuff everywhere. It's yeah. <laughs> and no, we brought, I, I knew that before 
we even came, so we brought our own yeah, stuff. Yeah, we did, but still. and it just might be Disney stuff that it might be. We bought online when we found out that yeah. the h2o products were going out of business we might have bought a bottle I think or they're three still on the ships though so i don't know how much of a, if they're still making it just for them or if disney Outward, i don't know but we bought our own bottles and we'll be i brought later. them right so we have a little touch of disney on the royal caribbean ships we do so but the bathroom's not laid out too bad there is like a little there's a little drawer in there and there's yeah. some shelves to keep some stuff because you can't keep your hair dryer in there because there's no outlet in there but there's enough for your you know, toothpaste and toothbrush. And I do keep my hair products in there for when I get out of the shower real quick. Right. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know either. And then the other difference is we only get um, room sir, or stateroom cleanup. Housekeeping. Housekeeping oh. once a day. You know, I guess maybe overall, I don't think that is has affected us too much. Because we ask our stateroom attendant to bring us extra towels. Correct. Which he has. And he's left the same number of towels that we've asked him to each day. And he's been fantastic. He has. So. But there's been little touches that I've noticed that on a Disney ship, mm -hmm. we would have had the nice little touches on a Disney ship that he does not do. Yes. Such as on a Disney ship. If my curling iron's too hot to like wrap up the cord mm -hmm. when we leave the stateroom, that Disney attendant would have wrapped up that cord and had my little curling iron nice and neat laid out yes. on the vanity. He yes. didn't do that. My right. little cord, I unplug it and it just lays there. Right. So all the little papers and things mm -hmm. on a Disney ship, those would have been all lined up nice yes. and neat. He doesn't do that. Yes. All the USB cords that we use mm -hmm. would have been all. Would have been all tidied up on a Disney yep. ship, not on this ship. Right. So, um, and that's the other thing with the shower head. I, I thought, well, I'll just take the shower thing off because it comes off the thing. Yeah, right. I thought, well, I can just kind of, you know, put my head inside the shower. It comes off and that'll work. Yeah. The little thing crimped and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any water out oh, of it. Yeah. But the hose it, crimped. It, it I was kinked. like, oh, I was like, Come yeah, on. kink. That's the word. Right, yeah. So that was a whole nother yeah. fiasco. Right. But at least he left me extra towels to do that. But yeah, the 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 cleaning wise, I think he does a, a decent job. I yeah. haven't really noticed any dust or no, no. You know, he's kept the carpets nice and clean, the beds clean, the towels are clean and everything. But the little touches yes. that we ex come to expect on a Disney ship, they're really not here. And that's probably because he is one person probably servicing more cabins than even if, you know, he was doing service twice. He's probably doing yeah, probably two I mean, and a half times the amount of work than he was doing pre-COVID. Because I think like twice a day housekeeping stateroom service was always kind of standard on right. cruises. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of these cruise lines are trying to take this. It was just called an opportunity yep. to make it more of a hotel. Mm -hmm. Gets, you know, because if people start coming or used to hotel stays, right. they're not going to notice and they're not going to expect it. Right. Where, and once you've kind of had that kind of service, mm -hmm. you really start to miss it. And at that point, you're going to, you know, maybe start considering different cruise lines. Yeah. Because while it costs less than some cruise lines, maybe it's not giving you the service of some other cruise lines. Right. So. And the nightly service wasn't always the same as the daytime service. The daytime service, I think, when they cleaned up the cabins in the morning, that was that was harder because they were making beds, cleaning yes. bathrooms, all that stuff. Where at night, you were just tidying up the cabins. Yeah, maybe getting the clean towels for you know, what you use in the morning. Yeah, you know, freshening yeah. up the towels or maybe smoothing the bed out a little bit, turning the sheets down, whatever. It was not a full service. No. Now, the poor stateroom guy is full servicing twice as many cabins, you know, than he had to before. It's not the same, you know, it's twice as much work. Yep. So they're really working hard. But at the same time, for me, as the cruise passenger, I'm getting half the service that I was before. I'm, right. I'll, I would never, ever remove the standard gratuity. Oh, never, never. Never. But I'm certainly, we always gave extra because we always had that extra service and felt that they deserved above and beyond. Yes. But I don't think that we'll give him extra because there's just not the extra there. There's the standard there and he absolutely deserves the standard. Right. But for us, the extra is not there. 
And that's sad. Yes. Because I don't think it's not that he doesn't want to give the extra. There's just he doesn't have the time to do the extra. Right. And it's not his fault. It's Royal Caribbean's fault. Yeah. Because they that's what the burden they put on their stateroom hosts. Right. That they don't give them time to do the extras. But like I said, if this is your first cruise or you're just cruising out, mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't notice. One runs a day. Why well, sounds like what we're supposed to have. Yeah. They wouldn't know. So anyway. Yeah. Well, we've kind of gone on a lot. We didn't really get to talk about all the activities we've done, but we'll have to maybe save that for another time. No, should we save the show too for the next time? <gasps> yes. The show was fantastic. Oh my say. goodness. That might take a while. That will take a while. Okay. Well, let's wrap this up so we can continue our vacation. Yeah. So do things to do. do. Oh my goodness. And we, I know it sounds a little bit negative here, but we are having a good time. We are having a really good time. So we are just some of the, we just put out some of the differences that yeah. we've had but no we've had a really really good time you know the dinners that we've had so far they've been really good yes. it's just you know it's i mean i hate and to we'll say, say it. it's uh, not disney yeah and and that's just the standard that, that we're used to we're used to and i should say before disney we had cruised royal caribbean uh, several times yes. and that was our standard back then and even if we compare royal caribbean to Royal Caribbean, to what it was before mm-hmm. and what it is now, mm, yeah, it's it's not holding its uh holding its own. But I would say if it sounds strange, but if the itinerary matched up with when you can go, I'd still kind of recommend it. I think to us to some people, Royal Caribbean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say we would never do Royal Caribbean again. I would do Royal Caribbean again. I just wouldn't do it in this cabin. Right. I don't think I'd do Oasis again because I'd have to see how they no. change some other ships. No, I would. I wouldn't do Oasis of the Seas again. But I would do an Oasis class ship again. Okay. So I just think that once they had this ship built, they learned from yeah, oh, things that they needed to yeah. tweak. But Oasis had three sea days, which I really liked the sea days. So that yeah. was kind of their thing. But I, I probably wouldn't do Oasis again. Yeah. I would want to do another Oasis class ship again. Just, I would want to do, I like did. sea days. Yeah. We love our sea days. I do. Our first sea day was great. That All was right. fun. Well, we better wrap this up. Everybody, thanks for joining us. Much more coming. We got the last half of our trip. We don't know what's going to happen yet, but we know it's going to be fun. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Tim Scott, Facebook, the website, resortloop.com. They can find you through me. If you have any questions for my <laughs> lovely little wife, Don. <laughs> Everybody, you've been listening to The Gateway to the Magic. See you, everybody. Vacation memories will stay with you and your family for a lifetime. The Resort Loop Travel Group was created with this in mind. Our fee-free services will relieve you of the stress and confusion of finding and booking the best vacation at the best price. After booking, we will continue to monitor for ways to save you even more on your vacation. We will check for any upcoming packages and discounts to save you as many vacation dollars as possible. Resort Loop Travel Group, gateway to your magical vacation memories. Get a quote or for more information, visit resortlooptravelgroup.com.